Uh, hi, and uh, welcome to another episode of With Enough Prep Time in the uh, doom and gloom age of apocalypse. Uh, it is the nerd man here to kind of entertain you since I don't have a job at the moment. I've been uh, furloughed, <laughs> uh, as many people have during this um, terrible, terrible crisis. Um, something I have to say about that, I hope all of you guys are doing well and you know, getting on with um, the being isolated. I've been um, alone now for uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, a friend that I, w I was only seeing one person because I didn't want to like, I've got a real kind of thing about, um, uh, I'm like a hypochondriac. So I've been only seeing one person or so. And, um, uh, they kept seeing other people, so I was like, nah, nah, nah you know what, I'm just not going to see you anymore <laughs> either, because I was like, I'm, every time I see them, I'm risking, like, getting this corona by, like, 57-something percent, and I do not trust that I am that healthy, that I don't have some kind of underlying health condition. But anyway, I hope everyone is doing well, and I, I just thought I would talk about that briefly and what my situation is, just so you know. Uh, so I just did a, a video on um, uh, the Snyder Cut um, and uh, Jody's Corner and um, whether Warner Brothers was uh, actually trolling um, uh, the Snyder Cut fans. So any Sny anybody who's into the Snyder Cut, whether they want it, they don't want it, really go and watch that video. I think for people who do want the Snyder Cut video... Uh, Snyder Cut, it will be good ammunition. So go look at that video, uh, like, subscribe. Um, this video I wanted to do, um, actually, uh, I'm going to do a series of videos today because, you know, uh, what better to do. Um, and this one, as you can see from the title, is uh, um, could Can Superman Be Black? Um, a uh, uh, And it's going to be on the politics of casting in Hollywood at the moment. So can Superman be black? And um, I think this is a really, really interesting topic. I've been thinking a lot about Superman for a while. Uh, he, if you don't know, is probably my favorite superhero. And I think he has been getting quite literally the short end of the stick. I mean, not only is he my favorite superhero, but I'm a huge DC fan. Like, the biggest DC fan. Uh, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, those are my people. And then I love Shazam, Martian Manhunter, Flash, all of those kind of guys. So I think they're all uh, great characters. So I wanted to just have a, a, a discussion about, um, you know, uh, Superman and, you know discussed you know uh, there was recently um it wasn't it wasn't it was quite a long time ago now i probably should have done a video then but there was some kind of talk of them casting the chap um from black panther um uh, the villain who played killmonger um in the superman movie and um i was you know there was also talk of casting idris elba as james bond so I remember during that, uh, that there was a lot of discussion um, over whether, you know, these characters can be changed and what is the virtues of them being changed versus the, you know, the, the, the failings of them being changed. And the reason I picked Superman for this discussion is because I think he's a very, very important person to discuss in relation to this, because it seems to be that there's two camps nowadays. There's the camp that says, never change any character's race, no matter what. That it, you cannot change the race of any character that has been white historically, or black historically, or whatever color historically. And that if you want to have more black characters and more representation in cinema, what you've got to do is make more black characters, or make more gay characters, or make more you know, Asian characters, etc, etc, etc. So just leave uh, these characters alone, leave them as they've always been. And uh, I have some sympathy for that. 
Trust me, I do have some sympathy for that position. The other position is, is the exact extreme of that, extreme opposite, which is, oh, you can change any character's colour. It doesn't matter. When James Bond can be a woman, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and it's good because women need um, female empowerment roles as well. Uh, it's not just men who need that. Women need to be able to look up to a kind of male char uh, to, to uh, characters within cinema to aspire uh, to be like them. And so my thing is, um, with Superman, I think you have to take these things on a... This is my opinion. I'm somewhere in the middle where I'm grey. And I think you have to take these things on a case-by-case -case basis. So let's discuss the topic of the you know, video, first of all, which is, can Superman um, himself be black? The simple answer to this question, to me, is no. Uh, I don't think Superman can be black. I don't think it makes sense for a couple of very, very important reasons. Okay, so the first reason, and bear with me on this, so the first reason is quite simple. It, it's one that's quite just empirical and basic. He's an alien shot from space to a family living in Kansas. And this is a simple all-Americana heart of the heart of... Um, uh, part of the American heartland, Midwest Americans who uh, who um, who represent the core values um, uh, that America may have even lost, you know, the core innocent values of freedom and respect and equality and etc, etc. And they, uh, you know, teach this young alien who's very, very, who's got these great powers uh, to... Uh, be, um, you know, Superman to have those values of America. So he's the ultimate American alien and the ultimate metaphor for the American alien taking on um, the values of America. So, obviously, they are from Kansas. Now, my criteria for whether something should be allowed or whether you can swap out a character's race or gender or even religion or sexuality is simply this if you change it does it fundamentally change the character if you change their race or if you change their sexuality does it fundamentally change the meaning and the mythological meaning of the character so for instance can superman have been brought up in detroit or can um, somebody uh, can and will, it, will will that fundamentally change the story? And or can a black kid land remarkably within uh, the only family in Kansas <laughs> who are farmers who are black, and then be raised by them to have the uh, same American values? Uh, I think just on a film level, having a black Superman kind of takes you out of the film because I do think it's kind of essential that he comes from Kansas. Um, could he come from Detroit and would it be the same thing? I'm not sure. Uh, but I think the kind of sense of the simple, you know, down-to-earth American values, I think he really needs to come from Kansas, you know, um, or something along those lines. I wouldn't be... I, I think... I do think it's core to the character. Uh, I'm trying to think now, or just off the top of my head, could he, could he, I don't know, does it make a difference if he's from Ohio or something like that? But I think it's, it's, it, there's something um, quite essential and beautiful about him being from, uh, you know, Kansas. Um, so, and given that he's from Kansas, it does make sense that the Kents would be white. And then does it cause problems? Um, either he's adopted by a white family and he's, Chinese or black and then there's questions more questions about where did this magical kid come from or you know uh, somehow magically he's Asian and lands with an Asian family in Kansas which is kind of weird 
um, or a, a black family in Kansas, and that's also kind of weird. And then it fundamentally kind of changes the mythology and the character um, uh, from there. Or it takes you out of the film because you're trying to get into your head. Why is this black family uh, farmers in Kansas, and uh, why is a black alien coming to? Uh, it, it, you know, the, the the story already strains credibility of the actual Superman story. So adding that extra layer of improbability onto it just um is it, it would be uh would i think this be very very distracting for a film um that and i think that's essential to the clock kent character and who he becomes the mild-mannered kind of reporter who goes to the big city so i really do think the kansas thing is essential and because of the kansas thing it's more likely that it would make sense for him to be white Okay, does that mean that he can't be played by, um, you know, somebody of mixed heritage or, you know, like an Asian who looks white or something like that? I, I have no problem with that, as long as they look like a white person. Um, the, the next thing um, is, uh, so, um, we already explained why uh, we, the, the Kansas thing is kind of essential to the character. The other thing I would say about Superman is this. The second reason is purely on a mythological reason. And I'm going to give you an example after. Because it's, this is going to sound really controversial. And some may be offended and think of what I'm saying is racist. And I hope you do not take it like that because it's not meant like that. Some of the symbolism and power of Superman is that he cut, that he has this kind of purity or of nobility um, in always doing the right thing, right? Or at least what he considers to be right. So if the law is wrong, um, Superman won't follow that law. He will follow what he thinks of as right. So that's why, you know, things like The Dark Knight Returns, even though I think it's a really, really great graphic novel, seriously takes Superman wrong. Superman, it, there's one aspect, you know, the, the truth, justice, and the American way. People often confuse that with Superman being like, oh, if America became a tyrannical government, then, uh, which it kind of is, but then Superman would, uh, you know... Uh, would join along with this kind of tyranny and and uphold the laws of uh, uh, of an immoral system. No, Superman's purity and goodness and nobility of spirit means that if a law is wrong, um, he'd be willing to break it. Uh, if they brought in a law suddenly saying like um, you know all blacks have to sit on the back of the bus, Superman would not you know uh, uh, adhere to that law. That, that that's the beauty of the character right so part of that is essentially part of the mythology part of the beauty of the mythology is and what makes it so powerful that superman would stand up for anyone he'd stand up for any little guy you know he'd stand up for for black people he'd stand up for people being oppressed in uh, you know some Indian country or some you know or Asian or sorry Asian country or some stop you know somewhere where people ordinarily just wouldn't care but because he has the power to do something about it and can see all of it that he he inspires people to also be caring and do the little that they can do so like Superman would care about you know a homeless person or you know a uh, as well as, you know, a volcano going off in, um, you know, in, in Hawaii somewhere, right? So the, the, there's that kind of duality to him, like where there's these massive global level events and yet Superman would still care about um, somebody uh, who wants to end their life and try and convince them, you know, that even though this is an incredibly small event, that uh, that, that, that is just as important, you know, to him. Uh, as uh, saving the world, you know. So, um, as I was saying, this is a very, very important feature of the Superman mythos. And as I said, I was going to give you an example of why it's so important because of that, that he is white. It is precisely because of that, that it is more powerful for him to be white 
than to be any other race. Because, and I'll give you the reason, and then I'll give you the example, and then I'm going to try and finish the video quickly. Um, because if Superman is black, or he is gay, or he is any kind of uh, person who comes from an oppressed uh, minority or contingency of um, our society, it gives him a reason, apart from being brought up by the best parents in the world, the Kents, with their great values, their great, um, great American virtues, right? It gives him another reason um, to care about people who are oppressed, to care about people who are marginalized, to care about, you know, uh, the others, um, you know, apart from himself. And that kind of... Um, does harm to the pure nature of his goodness okay so i'm not saying that a black person can't have the pure virtue and goodness of superman i'm not saying uh you know obviously i'm not saying that um but i'm not saying an asian person or anybody else can't have that pure virtue and goodness but the problem is i the iconography of that image right um uh, mythologically speaking doesn't have the same power because when you see a black person um helping out a black person or a homeless person or um you know somebody um who uh you know um uh, is down on their luck or whatever uh, or marginalized when you see a black person doing that you may think immediately well you know the reason he's doing that is not purely altruistic because he understands what it's like to be um, uh, to be uh, uh, discriminated against, right? So Superman, apart from being an alien, apart from being, you know, he has to be the most American-looking American thing, and his reason for under uh, for 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 going against discrimination should only be from the pure goodness of his parenting and how he was raised it shouldn't be oh he understands this because he knows the struggle or he knows what it's like to fight for representation or fight for this that and the other it has to be and i'll give you a perfect example of the power of this particular um uh, kind of heroism um, it, within comics so look at Captain America so the virtues of America with all the kind of religion and all of this kind of stuff is that you know homosexuality is probably um, you know by a considerable amount of Americans is something that would be discriminated against but Captain America in, uh, in, in Endgame in one of the better scenes of Endgame, uh, holds this meeting where he's having a discussion with a group of people who have lost loved ones, right? And he's talking to a gay man played by one of the Russo brothers. And the power of that scene is the contradiction and conflict between the kind of image of traditional American values, um, which is what you know, um, Captain America is supposed to represent, but also representing the best of American values, right? And it's that conflict, that tension between that, and the fact that Captain America goes on the side of, um, you know, uh, of 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 resisting the worst aspects of America and 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 celebrating the best aspects of America, which is to be understanding to um, be accepting, uh, to take all as equal and all um, deserving uh, the pursuit of happiness and property and etc, etc. So he um, is, you know, uh, discussing with this gay man, um, you know, his, his loved one, and he, uh, you know, is accepting and, and very compassionate and empathetic towards him, right? And the reason that that works is because Captain America is the straightest, most square-chinned, American, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, all-American, um, boy-next-door, boy-scout, um, 
that represents and looks like what uh, the American kind of, you know, fantasy of what, what the all-American kind of looks like. So the fact that he cares about this gay man and he cares about this, it makes it a more powerful scene. Now, let's replace that with if Captain America was gay or if he was black or if he was somebody who traditionally would have been um, not accepted uh, within American culture. The scene doesn't quite work in the same way. It means that he now has a reason, an inbuilt reason to empathize with this person other than um, the pure virtue of being Captain America. And that's the same with Superman. It's that purity of their virtue um, uh, that means that they have to, um, you, you know, they have to, in that sense, to have those kind of powerful scenes and to believe that the reason that they truly care about people comes directly just from their being and their heart or their, the way that Kent's raised them or whatever, um, or, the, or their nobility and bravery is, is to do with what's, you know, comes from inside and not just, uh, well, the world has given me a tough hand so I can understand other people who the world has given a tough hand. And it works the same way the other way around, by the way, you know. Um, there could be um, characters who, these, these kind of characters that Superman and, you know, Captain America are, are kind of aspirational heroes. So, you know, for instance, um, a black hero uh, saving who who saves the 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 daughter of a clan member um you know that equally has that kind of element of he's doing this in spite of something in spite of the discrimination against him um so that 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 there's a level of virtue um, that 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 it raises that act of virtue to a, a, a another kind of uh, level. So those those are my reasons why Superman, I in my opinion, shouldn't be black. Now, do I think that you could have another kind of um, a character from Krypton um, take the mantle of Superman who's black? Absolutely, I I, I do think that. Um, I'm going to have a further discussion of this. If you enjoy this uh, video, um, in a couple of a couple more videos, I'm going to discuss this a little bit more. Um, the next video I'm going to be doing um, is I'm going to be discussing more um, kind of issues regarding the Snyder Cut um, and my rankings of the DCU movies and what I think should be done with uh, Snyder. So those are going to be like my next three videos. But thank you very much. Please like.